Hey, happy Tuesday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus, and I'm going to give you the latest update. Not only what's going on with the severe weather, which is looking like a big damage and wind event, our next storm coming in, bringing a lot of strong damage and winds as well, plus still bringing feet of snow. But now we got this big cold blast that we got to deal with right after this severe weather. So I'm going to give you all the latest breakdown. Make sure you subscribe. I am all year long. Make sure you share the information, everybody. Hit the like button. Support the video. Thank you so much for your help. Now let's get into your information because there's a lot of changes on what's going on with this severe weather event. And it's really happening around 10 o'clock tonight. This is central time, just so you know. But after these storms start brewing up towards the east, you have a few cells that start getting into the area where it has lift and it has a lot of dew points. And it could be chances for a tornado around southern Indiana around that time. And you see how it does move further towards southern Ohio as well. you got chances for tornadoes, maybe even nocturnals overnight, but you can't say it's a guarantee. The only thing that looks like pretty much like a guarantee is it's going to bring a lot of chances of hail with this, and it is going to turn into a damaging wind event right after that. And it's going towards the east with more damaging winds that way, and the next one come in from the West Coast. So this is stretching into Wednesday also. There's a little bit of a tornado threat for Kentucky and West Virginia as well. And these storms will bring damage of winds towards the Northeast. You can see you start getting these little squall lines that appear up, bringing these damage and winds with it. Plus what's coming next? We still have that next storm that's coming in, still taking that higher ridge into Canada. So it's not really gonna be affecting a lot of the US. But it is coming in for Washington and Oregon, even California, Utah, and Nevada. And it is going to start bringing in some damaging winds on that as well. So I got it on 9 o'clock, right where the storm starts brewing up. So we can see exactly what is going on with this event. And you see the slight risk has stretched out. That's a lot of that's for damaging winds and hail. But you see your chances for your tornadoes, your probability. And you notice there's a big area. And I've been seeing someone show this yesterday where it shows a lot of your significant tornado primers. And it shows it raising up really strong where you're getting tens all over the scale. But there's no storms going through tapping into that. That's all that lift, all them dew points I showed you yesterday. These storms will kick off in northern Illinois, bringing chances for hail with that as well. You see that is bringing chances for hail in that as that goes into southern Wisconsin for this evening does mile down. But once you hit around 9 and 10 o'clock, you get these little discrete cells that's passing through southern Indiana, a little bit of southern Illinois going into southern Ohio. Those are little discrete cells that you got to watch out for for just a few hours. But then you got this big straight line wind damage event that's going to kick in. And this is covering multiple areas as that pushes through to the early morning hours. Then it's going to go to the northeast and it's going to bring in your damage and wind. Then we got the northwest with the next damage and winds. So I'm going to give you all the latest information I did find for you. Thank you so much for your time, everybody. Now let's get into the video. And you also can see that they are expecting a lot of large hail. This is a two inches in diameter. This is literally golf balls that could be coming down with these storms as they go across. I'm seeing a northern side and a southern side. It's not the whole area. But here's your cities and states at risk for the damage and hail threat for today. And the large hail, the golf ball size, is the white line on top. You still got the same area for the damage and wind threat for today. I will go through the winds. Here's your cities and states at risk for today. And you have your tornado threat for today. You still got a 2% and that 5% what I just showed you. Here's your cities and states at risk. National Weather Service does say scattered, strong, and severe thunderstorms associated with large hail, some 2 inches in diameter. Damage and gusts and a few tornadoes will be possible from late this afternoon into the evening and overnight from parts of the mid-Mississippi Valley to the Ohio Valley and southern Great Lakes. Now, this is what I wanted to show you. When we look at our significant tornado perimeters, it factors in dew points, wind shear, it factors in the best atmosphere to have a potential tornado. You can see it really ramps up, and I'm sure you're going to see a lot of this today. I saw this yesterday. It goes all the way up to a 13 out of 10 scale bringing a lot of chances for tornadoes and not just for right here all the way in arkansas all the way into eastern oklahoma and look how that just grows into a very dangerous event looking area and people are saying hey this is going to bring strong storms now when you look at your precipitation you can see that them storms don't come through that whole area for hours so as this is building for hours on hours you can see right here with your precipitation that for those hours, there is nothing passing through until you get to nine o'clock. So as it starts winding down quickly, 
from nine o'clock to 11 o'clock. That's when you're starting to get these cells that's going across from Indiana into Ohio, just like I've been showing you. That don't mean you definitely got a chance for a tornado. That don't mean that this is just super energy waiting to just spark up tornadoes. You gotta have the precipitation. You gotta have the storms going through that to make that even anything that matters. So when you take a good look at that, you'll see there is nothing in that area at that time. So please don't get fooled by this today. A lot of people is gonna see this and think it's gonna be a big tornado event. It is not. So when we check our updraft, Helicity, this lets us know how large this hail could actually get. You can see as you're going through the evening, you have some strong cells moving through northern Illinois, bringing in chances for that large hail, for that golf ball size hail. Then it goes off into Michigan. Then you got it coming from southern Missouri, southern Illinois, and those other cells that goes in later tonight, across Indiana and across Ohio. Then it goes into Kentucky for tomorrow for those other cells, bringing chances for tornadoes for that region as well. But it looks like it is stronger for northern Illinois. Chances for large hail. Now you also see here for Wednesday, you do have that chance for that tornado as that moves to the east. So it will be early in the morning, so just be aware you do got some storms that will be moving through. So far, here's your cities and states at risk for Wednesday for a possible tornado. Now, National Weather Service only says isolated, strong, severe thunderstorms will pose a risk of damage and wind gusts Wednesday morning from eastern Kentucky into far southern Ohio and West Virginia. But the full motion of these winds that's picking up is unbelievable. And it's already starting over here from the northwest of Washington, Oregon, going through Montana, going through Wyoming, going through Colorado, New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma. All this yellow is all 50s, I will show you. And it does pick up as it goes out through the northeast, showing that it will get up to that 50, that 60, some higher elevations, even getting up to that 70 miles per hour wind gust as this races down and goes across the central plains and the south central. And you see it from here, it's getting stronger, going all the way towards the eastern side of the lower 48, putting a lot of people in that high 40 to that 50 miles per hour wind gust. And those cells that I showed you for Northern Illinois that could be bringing a large hail. Look at this, maybe 50 and 60 miles per hour winds coming with those as well. Very strong cells. That's what the newest information shows for that and Southern Indiana. And look at the winds as it goes out through Wednesday and portions of Thursday. Going into Canada as well, a big area of 50 miles per hour wind gusts and 60. Look at all that red is all 60s. So a very big area for some very powerful damage and winds. Make sure you got things picked up out of your yard. That way you don't carry into the neighbor's yard. And if you're in that large hail, make sure you park your cars or anything that you don't want golf ball size hail hitting. Make sure you go hide that somewhere so it'd be okay. Now here's some information that I found from National Weather Service, your local office in Wisconsin, showing that you do have that one out of five chance for strong storms. It's gonna be more severe for Northern Illinois right where I was showing you. Peak timing coming through Wisconsin will be from six to 9 p.m. for today. Showing the main impacts is large hail, damage and winds. So just be aware of this, I'm not seeing no big tornado outbreak. I know there's been a lot of hype on this. Northern Illinois, your time is from 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. tonight. So just remember, I'm not showing a lot in that area. It will be northern and it will be southern later on. Showing chances for damage and winds, damage and hail in a tornado or two, especially around northern Illinois. Southern Illinois, you're going to be more like the damage and wind event. You can see over here on the side, chances for your ping pong size hail, chance for wind gusts up to or over 60 miles per hour. Tornado chances are less, and you're flooding just none. Now, these storms will develop in the evening with some becoming severe. Storms will gradually weaken as it moves east into Indiana after midnight. Now, Indiana, they are expecting the large hail, the damaging wind gusts, and a possible tornado. I'm showing that possible tornado will be around southern Indiana, but you do have to watch out for all three modes. Peak coverage and intensity is expected this evening and overnight. All modes are possible for you. And as it goes into Ohio, you can see your severe weather outlook and your tornado outlook, who has a stronger chance for tornadoes versus a weaker chance in the green. These storms are going to weaken off, showing your primary severe weather threat will be damaging straight line winds, large hail, and maybe a tornado or two. Now you can see with H-Triple-R that as you go through the evening, this is going to bring 
more heavy rainfall towards northern Kentucky, southern Ohio, and going into Pennsylvania, West Virginia, northern Virginia, Maryland, northern Delaware, some of Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut, Rhode Island, some over here of Massachusetts, and Maine. Bringing some good bit of rainfall in y'all direction. Plus, it's starting to add up for the northwest because you do have that system that's going to start brewing in. Bring a lot of heavy snow as well for Washington and Oregon. This is with Ace Triple R. I will show you with the snowfall as well. It is going to start adding up to feet of snow immediately. Matter of fact, the next six days showing a potential six to eight feet in the higher elevations of California. Now, when you go by National Weather Service, it shows a little bit less. It shows those two inches are one inches, but almost in the same regions. And you can see this. It's almost in the same areas as what you see for HRRR, but look over here for the northwest. This is where it's starting to add up on that flooding as you go a little bit further. It's going all the way into Friday morning, and it's going to keep going further down California. Then when you look at the snowfall ratings on that, look at all this additional snow for Washington, Oregon, California, Idaho, Montana, even some of Wyoming. This is even going into over here by Denver, by Colorado. You're actually going to have some thunder snow that's going to be popping up for you as you get your snowfall. And showing for everyone else, you just get a little glaze of snow. You might see it come down. It probably won't even stick. We do have the cold air coming behind it, so you might keep some in your grass, but it's not bringing no big snowstorm to everybody. Always showed maybe northern Michigan and the UP of Michigan going into Canada. That was about it. Other than what's going to happen for Colorado, a little bit of New Mexico, and the northwest. This is really going to start adding up. Plus, after this storm system moves across, we still got that storm in the south. It's going to bring some storms across the south along the Gulf Coast. Going to Atlantic still be a little bit of something. But you got that strong system that's coming in starting Thursday and Friday. Bring a lot of winds and bring a lot of severe weather towards the west coast as this next storm system comes in and brings feet of snow. That is still coming. That has not changed. Matter of fact, when you look at National Weather Service model, it sees all these high winds. And as that next system comes in, look at this. Bringing in that 50, that 60, that 70, even getting up to the 80 miles per hour wind gusts. Bringing a lot of dangerous winds coming with that next system. So far showing for Oregon, Nevada, Northern California, and some of Idaho. This is going to come in even further. Matter of fact, look at the next Six days. That's all this is, is six days. It's cold air coming in with this big trough, bringing all this snowpack. Look at this. This is an amazing amount of snow. Getting feet of snow in all these higher elevations of the Sierra Nevada, the Cascades, the Rocky Mountains. Everyone's getting a lot of snowfall, at least on the western side of the lower 48. And you can see that shot here is not really coming towards the eastern side. Remember, we're going to be in that big high ridge bubble. After this cold blast comes through, we're going to be in a big warm up. It will be a quick mover, but look how far down it goes with these very cold temperatures and the wind chills. This is bringing a lot of strong wind chills with this as well. This is pretty much going to be a wind chill cold front. And it's going to be very extreme. So if you look at this for today, you're going to get into the 70s and the 80s while you got these extreme cold temperatures coming down. So first, you're going to be in the high 70s. Look at this. First, you're going to be in the high 70s kicking in. And then as you go overnight, literally are going to change 60 degree difference. So first you're going to be in the 70s and 80s, then as the cold front comes down, now you're going to be in the 20s. And this isn't even in your wind chills. And it's going to bring single digits, negative temperatures, it's going to be a big change. So here you are on Wednesday morning instead of the 70s and 80s, now you're looking at the teens and the 20s while you're getting the negative temperatures rolling through this is not your wind chills with your wind chills it's even worse now you're getting that negative 20 degree wind chill moving in from canada and bringing the negative teens and single digits far into the country not to mention look at the higher elevations of the rocky mountains you're talking about negative wind chills across many states as you go through Thursday, here it comes down again, bringing in more 20s and freezing temperatures. And with your wind chills, look at this. Now it's moving further down towards the southern side of the U.S. You're going to stay warm along the Gulf Coast. You don't have to worry about that. 
keep your crops going, but everyone else is going to feel this cold blast. And as you go through Friday, it's going to be again for the Ohio Valley and the Northeast. While we start to get this big bubble, it is bringing some cold wind chills with that as well. Then right after that, that's when we're going to go on that above average, that big warm bubble as we go through the beginning of March while they get all this heavy snowpack on the West Coast. And maybe later in March still showing another potential cold front coming down. Thank you so much for your time, everybody. I hope this report has helped you in some way. If it has, consider leaving a like. Hit the subscribe button if you lasted this far. Thank you again for visiting my channel. I will keep you updated every single day on what's going on with this next transition. And before you go today, Psalm 134. Behold, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary. And bless the Lord, the Lord that made heaven and earth. Bless thee out of Zion. Amen. Thank you for your time, everybody. Hope you have a great day. And remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I hope he always keeps you safe, you and your families. And forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Have a great day, everybody, and be safe.